Hello and welcome to Vavork. I'm Brian Watrous and this is part 36 in a 10-part video series where we're learning how to automate using VRealize Orchestrator. We're going to do things a little bit different today. Uh, as you can see from the title, we're going to be talking about the PowerShell plugin for the VRealize Orchestrator server. But again, this is a little different. This time the video is being uh, inspired by a request from one of the numerous VVORC subscribers. As you can see, Manvendra asked, Hey Brian, can you create a video on running PowerShell scripts from VRO? Yes, Manvendra, I can do that. Not only can I do that, I'm going to do six videos on the PowerShell plugin for Orchestrator. But before I go any further here, let me start by saying this is probably a really bad precedent for me to set. Um, so let me set expectations here. Uh, like many of you, I am super busy with work continually uh, running around all over the country, all over the world uh, with tons and tons of work to do. So I generally do not have the ability to uh, just turn out videos uh, based on, on requests. I do, however, request that you send in your ideas for videos that you think would be useful. I can't promise that I will get around to doing them. For instance, it's been four weeks since Manvendra uh, put in this request, um, but I will try. So that said, feel free to submit your ideas, but uh, don't count on it always happening. Anyways, um, let's get to Monvendor's topic. So in Orchestrator, uh, as you know, in Orchestrator, we create these things called workflows. And if we have to write any code in an Orchestrator workflow, the code that we write that in, the language we write that code in, is JavaScript. So what's this PowerShell's plugin? PowerShell is a completely different language, which, as you know, is from Microsoft. Uh, related to that, you have VMware's PowerCLI. If you don't know about those, you might want to read up about those. Otherwise, this video is going to make no sense. But PowerShell is a different language. So how can we call PowerShell code from Orchestrator if Orchestrator is based on top of JavaScript? Well, let's continue on and find out. So what is the PowerShell plugin for Orchestrator? What does it do? Well, as you can see here, the first thing I want you to know is what it does not do. The PowerShell plugin does not allow you to switch from writing JavaScript code to writing PowerShell script code in your orchestrator workflow. That's not the point of the PowerShell plugin. Rather, the PowerShell plugin allows your orchestrator workflows to call JavaScript code. Now, to do that, the PowerShell code could be hard-coded into the VRO workflow. So you could embed um, PowerShell commands into your JavaScript code in your orchestrator workflow, um, which is not the same thing as just typing uh, a PowerShell. Uh, that first approach where you hard-code the PowerShell code into your JavaScript in your workflow is challenging. Um, it's totally doable, but it, you'll, you'll, you, if you go that route, you're going to uh, find pretty quickly that you have to be really good at quoting strings if you want to hard code your PowerShell code into your JavaScript code in your workflow. So yes, that is a possible way. You can hard code the, the PowerShell code. But more likely, what you're going to do is have the PowerShell code that you want Orchestrator to call to exist in a separate file. Now, that separate file could be a file that's stored locally in the Orchestrator server itself, or it could be a file that's stored on a uh, external Windows machine that has PowerShell capabilities. And that uh, last approach, um, using a remote Windows machine that has PowerShell, and that's where our, our PowerShell code file is going to be, that's the approach that we're talking about here in this video. And quite frankly, out of these three different approaches, that is the easiest one, which is why I'm starting here. So how do, how's that PowerShell plugin work? So what it does is it allows Orchestrator to, to um, it allows your Orchestrator workflow to call JavaScript code that's going to be run not by Orchestrator, but rather to be run by um, PowerShell on presumably a Windows machine. There's actually uh, non-Windows versions of PowerShell nowadays. For instance, there's a version of PowerShell that runs on top of Linux. That would be fascinating for us to look at here in this video, but we're not going to. Instead, we're just going to focus on good old traditional PowerShell 
running on top of a Windows machine. So again, with the PowerShell plugin for Orchestrator, the actual PowerShell code is going to run on a Windows machine. It's going to run in a PowerShell session on a Windows machine. So since there's multiple machines involved, the Orchestrator server where your workflow is running and the Windows machine where the PowerShell code is going to run, we need some way of connecting those machines together. And in the case of PowerShell, it provides uh, at least two, there may be more. By the way, I haven't said this, I am not an expert in, in PowerShell. Um, so having said that, I know of two ways that you can uh, connect together a machine like an orchestrator server with a PowerShell host such as Windows. Uh, one of those approaches is to use WinRM, which stands for, what is that, Windows Remote Management. Um, go, go look up WinRM at, at Microsoft.com or Wikipedia.org, um, or you can use OpenSSH. In this video, I'm going to take a look at how to, you, how to uh, use WinRM to make the connection. Actually, I lied. We're not actually going to learn how to do that configuration until the next video. But these, these six videos in a row here are going to be um, based on the assumption that you're going to use WinRM as the way of connecting the uh, orchestrator server and the Windows machine where the PowerShell code is actually going to run. So assuming you're using WinRM, WinRM is very uh, flexible. It lets you do different things. For instance, WinRM allows you to, to have the connection between the orchestrator server and the Windows machine could be using good old HTTP or it could be using HTTPS where the S obviously stands for secure. Um, additionally, the connection when it's made um, can use different forms of authentication. For the PowerShell plugin for Orchestrator, we can either use basic authentication, that's where you pass in a username and password, uh, or we can use Kerberos authentication. Both um, Orchestrator and, and uh, PowerShell, excuse me, WinRM support both forms. In these six videos, we're going to take a look at the simpler of the two. We're going to be focusing on basic authentication. And as you can see in the last bullet here, you can configure WinRM to allow uh, unencrypted traffic. If I recall correctly, that is not allowed by default. So as we're going to see in the next video where I show you how to configure WinRM, one of the things we're going to have to do if we want to use HTTP is we're going to have to um, configure WinRM to allow unencrypted traffic. On the other hand, if we uh, are going to encrypt our traffic and we are going to use HTTPS, then you got to deal with certificates and so forth. Um, and I don't want to tackle that. This is not a class. Not a class. It's not a class. Um, this is not a video on, on, um, on security. So if you want to learn how to do the same types of things I'm going to show you for unencrypted, excuse me, for encrypted HTTPS, that's for you to uh, study on your own. But what we're going to be doing in the next video is taking a look more closely at WinRM and specifically, how do I configure WinRM on a Windows machine where I've got PowerShell uh, able to run my PowerShell script that Orchestrator is going to call? Whew, that's a mouthful. Uh, anyways, I'm going to uh, take a few breaths here and uh, get ready for the next video, and I'll see you there.